I've been hearing I've been hearing this sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, Sarnetta and some of the other ones been talking about it, but like you know, the House of Consciousness, Sarnetta and some other ones been talking about, you know, whether the Bible, whether it condones, you know, R A P E, that's the way I wanna say it, because they say that if you say it too much or whatnot like that, it affects your algorithm. So people if you don't know what the word I mean by R A P E you know, just put it in your, write it, type it, R-A-P-E, and then, you know, look it up, definition. But one to say that the Bible condones that. And they pointed to some areas, especially Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is getting, like, a lot of attention amongst others outside of, you say, I and I order. You know, even I and I sabbatical order. And now we're in Deuteronomy, the final book. We're coming, like, to the end of the year. You know, um, New Year's is coming forward fall festival season you know the season about to change very soon what's interesting is that the holy part of the year hebraically is the first seven months from around april may right and when we come to around the seventh month it talks about the end of the year but it's not really the end of the year year but it's the end of like the holy year so that's where we're at so we're this is why we're like in deuteronomy the fifth book so the question i heard tonight Right, while well, I was dealing with another matter, shared it with the brother, right? But the question I heard tonight, right, was is the is Deuteronomy the laws that 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 the Lord that Lord gave, right? That everything that we have in Deuteronomy is it from the Lord. You're like the Lord to say Yahuwah, you know, I'm gonna say Jehovah, right? Or someone say Yahuwah, but not to get into the name as you mentioned. You know, that will be another reason right there. But is Deuteronomy, who wrote Deuteronomy, right? Who wrote Deuteronomy? Is Deuteronomy the Lord's words or is it Moses' words? I, I think I already kind of, kind of, you know, gave the answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the question right there, is Deuteronomy. Now, you know, notice we're studying Deuteronomy right here, right? The first thing is Deuteronomy means... Well, deut deutero means repetition and nomos, it means law. So literally it means the repetition of the law. It's based on something that is found in Deuteronomy. That's the Greek name that comes down to us today, Deuteronomy, right? The Hebrews, we as Hebrews and Judaically, Hebraically, when we read the Hebrew, we call it um, Debarim or Devarim, which means the words, the words, right? The words, just basically like words. Usually when we say the words from a Hebrew Judaic perspective, we mean the ten words called the Ten Commandments. Because those are the words that Yahweh, that Jehovah, that God the Father, you can say Son, Holy Spirit, spoke with his own voice, his own mouth, according to the scripture. But according to the you said it, let me ask something. This is how you said it, let me ask something. Uh -uh. No with the the question you asked about Deuteronomy. You know, the answer kind of been a little obvious if you're paying attention. That Moses has a lot of his own writing in Deuteronomy. And I would say we have to look into the fact that Moses was a very, very highly intelligent fellow. To where it was even said in the scriptures that he was learned in all the ways of Egypt. So he had a wide range of knowledge with his um, seat he had in Egypt. So he had a strong grasp of the laws, the social structures, you know, all these things, probably even astronomy and, and, and you know, and geometry and these different type of teachings, you know, as far as historical things of, of the times and, and, you know, probably back before the flood and all these things, he probably had some kind of knowledge of, you know. So we put all that knowledge there with what he gained once he left Egypt and start to follow the Most High and combine those two lands together. I wouldn't feel that it is impossible for him to have put some of his, you know, his knowledge that he has within some of his writing. Mm. So that would make sense to I and I based on why just, you know, mm. speak there. You know? Mm -hmm. Correct. No, no, this is quite, quite, 
quite correct right there. Yeah, Moses would learn in the in the thing New Testament says the wisdom, all the wisdom of the Egypts. I guess upper and lower Egypt, you know, he's learning all the wisdom. Now we're gonna point to just we're gonna just get into a portion of this. Cause I sent the eye the 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 PDF we found and this is yeah. from the now, now I know some people. Now, y'all who are all against the Gnostics, so forth, the word gnosis. If you were to read the the Bible that 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 the early Christians read in Greek, the word gnosis is found all over the place to know. When Christ told about you shall know the truth, he's using the word gnosis, gnostikoi, which means to know. Basically, it just means to know. We know what do you know? Not what do you believe? Not what do you guess? You know, what do you assume or what do you know, right? So I'm going to the Gnostic, the Gnostic Gospels or the Gnostic Scriptures of the Bentley Layton. But there's one particular fragment that's been found. It's called Ptolemy's or Ptolemy, Ptolemy, right? It's one of those old funny names. Ptolemy, Greek name, Ptolemy's Epistle to Flora. Now, even though ones have these names, don't always assume that these ones were like so-called um, um, European or white people in that sense because a lot of y'all have names <laughs> need I go on you know what I'm saying even though ones will say I'm a Hebrew I'm an Israelite so forth and so on for those who who can make that and make that claim but now I want to touch on this a portion of this right here right and if we can go through this right here like you see what it says the prologue the prologue because of course we're not going to be able to go through this all in one sitting but I think this is okay. going to be a very important study. So, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So, is all the words what we have in Deuteronomy? Is it from the Lord? Like, there's a lot of laws there. It's a book of laws. It's called a repetition of the laws. Oh, the reason why it's called Deuteronomy is because when they were translating it from the from a ancient Hebrew into the Greek, right? They sought a name for it, and the name Deuteronomy comes from Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 18 and it comes really from the hebrew idea of a copy of the law the copy of the law so if you just take notes deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 18 it speaks about a copy of the law in fact this is concerning a king concerning a king that when a king comes to his throne a hebrew or israelite king right when an israelite king comes to his throne if he's faithful that means if he's a true hebrew Right, and the Hebrew is the spirituality, not the carnality. But if he's a true, um, you know, a believer, we can say in the true faith of the patriarch Abraham, right? Then when he comes to the throne, he must do some things. And in Deuteronomy chapter 17, from verse 14 to the end of the chapter, these are the things he must do. And when we get to verse 18, it says, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law. Right? So in the Hebrew, this is the Mishneh, Mishneh Ha Torah. Mishneh, Mishneh, like the Mishnah. You might hear this among Jews, Judaic expression. It's one of the levels of study and teaching, but it's, it's basically the level of repetition, like going over something. You know, because they say that redundancy is important in education, like math mathematics. And if you learn your multiplication table, what did you have to do? You had to go over it and over it and over it. You learned your ABCs, what did you have to do? You had to go over it and over it until, until you knew it by heart or by memory. But here, repetition, repetition, it, repetition is, is vital in education. That he shall write him a copy of this law in a book. Out of that which is before the priest, the Levites. So the words copy of this law is where we get Deuteronomy. Right? So the book of Deuteronomy literally means a copy or repetition of the law. Now I want to emphasize that again. It's the last book of what's called Torah, the five books of Moses that's ascribed to Moses. And in the New Testament, Moses' law. Now the Messiah, Yeshua, he gives us the keys. He gives the keys to overstanding this. This is what really made it real to me. It's not just a religion thing or faith thing. Yes, religion, if it's good, if it's, if it's true religion, then it's good. If it's faith, if it's the true faith, if it's the faith of Yeshua, it's good. But it's not about that. It's about understanding what Yeshua was saying. What he was saying, you know, in red letter, 
right? In the red letter, you remember the part about divorce where Yeshua is saying the same, but Moses gave us a writ of divorce that we can divorce like a wife by just writing down like I divorce you and giving it to her and sending her away. You, you remember that part? And yeah. Moses said, I mean, Yeshua said, Moses did this because of the hardness of your hearts. Let me see if I can bring this up for the people because I don't expect ones and ones initially to go look these things up for themselves. But hopefully if we can make it interesting, you know what I mean? And, you know, and show them something and say, oh, no, he lied about that because somebody else told you a lie that you believe. So now you're going to think that we're lying about this. Well, go look it up. That's all we got to show you some things on the screen. So Moses, let's put Moses and hardness. Right? Find the truth for yourself. Find the truth for yourself. Here, we have, we have Matthew chapter 19, verse 18. Now, we're going to have to do what the Bible says here a little and there a little. And this is, hopefully, this is going to be a, a multi-part series, my brother. Because I know that I... Matthew 19, 8. Matthew 19, 8. Sorry. 19, 8. 19, 19, 8. The previous quote was about the title of Deuteronomy that was translated from the Hebrew to Greek. That means a copy, a repetition of the law. But here we're looking at Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. In 19, verse 8, let me go here because I have the main verse on the screen. But, you know, we want to, like, look at the verse before and the verse after. So we're at verse, verse 8, right? So let's, let's scroll up right here and let's go, to, let's go to verse 3 for a moment. The Pharisees also came to him, tempting him, saying to him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Basically to say, you know, you know what it sounded like? It sounded like how the serpent asked, asked the woman. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! Have God not said <laughs> that you can put away the woman for any reason you want to? Right? Lead, leading questions, eh? Leading questions, you know? Um, what do you say? Counsel is testifying. Objection. Right or Satan, Satan, right? And he answered and said to them, "What now?" Here's Yeshua now answering the Pharisees. Have y'all not read? Every time I read that, it always makes me laugh because that means reading is important. That means yeah. if people are not able to read or if things have prevented you to read, that is a crime against your humanity. That's a crime against your humanity. Because when Yeshua says, "Have you not read?" It's the assumption is that everybody could read. Imagine someone say, oh, I can't read. That's like a sin, right? That's a lack because you're lacking able to find the truth for yourself because you can't read it depending on someone else to read it for you. Have you all not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, verse 5, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain two but one flesh what therefore Elohim or Xavier God hath joined together let not man put asunder so now they're trying to put away gender think about it male and female <laughs> let could, not um, could you do me a favor uh -uh. in the Hebrew Text the Amharic or uh, even the Kona Greek. That first sentence there, when it says, "Have you not read?" That first one mm -hmm. is is that interpreted exactly correctly? Have you not read? Yeah. From what because I from what I recall, yeah. I'm, 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 let me go right here. Let me go right here. From what I recall, yes. Let me let me go to. I'm a, I'm a, I, since I have this on the screen right here, it's easier for me to go to the Greek and to the Hebrew. For, first of all, the word read in the Greek is, is anagnosko. Interesting. Anagnosko means to this. Gnosko is at the root, is the root, is the verb of gnosis, of Gnostic, gnosis. Gnostic is one who knows. Gnosis is knowledge. And gnosko, gnosko means to know, like it's the verb. To the reason I'm asking that is for interpretation, you know, because when you read this thing just now, you know, the other day in my own head having a conversation with myself when I'm hearing certain things. 
and uh-huh. my you know my conversation with myself when I hear that I saying to myself I said this thing has to be a little more deeper than what is saying they have you not read than to just mean literally in a literal sense well, 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 I, I, I looking at it more as I got you I got you I got you. In other words, wait for it. Anna Gnosko, right? There's two words. The basically together has a sense of to distinguish between, to recognize, to know accurately, to acknowledge. That's the first sense, and then secondarily is to read. So in other words, it's 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 like when somebody says, "Haven't you read that? Haven't you read?" It's like, "Haven't you understood what you read?" In other words, right? Haven't you understood? Literally in the Hebrew is um. Keratem, keratem, kara, kara, kara is an interesting word. It means like to call out, like to speak, to call out, but it also means to 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 read. So, but so I even expanding that, you know, I even, that's why I asked you to go over that in the in, like in like in like in ancient text, you know, because it, 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 I'm looking at interpretation wider than that, because just like how we look at the word education and to learn, that is outside of school. So you, know, so you just don't learn in school, you just don't get educated in school. Now, me and you early, earlier, before we start the record, we were reasoning. And I brought up a scenario, and I'm going to bring up the scenario now. Mm. Where we live in a time here, in a place where we call civilization, wherever in the world you are right now. You know, when you live with a place, you have, you can flick on the light, you turn on the water. You take these things for granted, the light and the water, come on, you have internet, you have all these things, you know, we go to the grocery store, we drive car, fly on plane, you know, we are, you know, we do all these things, we have books to read, knowledge, we have the Bible, we know the name of the Father in different, you know, names, you know, we know Yahshua, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Jehovah, you know, Haile Selassie, Allah, Muhammad, all these names, we know of these people, right, we know these things, we have these knowledge. And we have the Bible and we have teachings of different type and ways one should trap the earth and one should live in harmony amongst each other and the way we should treat each other with the golden rule and all these things. Yeah, we know these things, right? But now you got people now who don't live in what we call civilization. These people live out in some kind of far out jungle bush type of place where they ain't got no running water, no light to flick on. They have to have fire at night for light and warmth and these things, you know? They got to go to the river for water. They got outhouse for toilet and these kind of things. They still live in these kind of life places on the earth. But these set of people here now, these people live within harmony and unison with nature. Mm-hmm. The way they live is according to nature, the principles of nature, which is a oneness of all, to, so everything can strive. They don't take more than they need from the land. They take what they need and replenish it. They make sure they work with nature so them and nature could strive. So now, when we're looking at these set of people who never read a book in their life, never see a computer, never see a light switch, or running water, none of these things they never see in their life. But these are some of the happiest people I know because they live in one with nature. Now, when this thing we call judgment, they come and the father say, all right, I grab it, my peoples. How oh, you who say you know the Messiah and you trying to follow Christ and all these things, with all the flaws you dealing with, with all the, you know, the deceitfulness and backsliding and all these things, where they say these Christian, like I said, well, they backslide and all these things. How oh, you supposed to get picked over these people here? Who we never hear the Father name. Who we never read a book. We mm. live within unison and harmony with nature, which is the way that you're supposed to say you follow in the Messiah and live. Mm-hmm. Because the Messiah's way of living is a oneness and harmony with all living things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially as an Israelite yeah. or as a Christian, yep. Yes, so mm-hmm. when I see this thing about having you read, i looking at reading nature. You know, not, not just no book. Reading nature. You know, reading how we're supposed to live amongst each other. Because if you could read that and see how we all come together in one unison for everything to strive, if you could read that, you mm. in oneness with everything. That means you in oneness with the Father, and you have 
basically accomplish the golden rule. Mm, mm. My brother, my brother, my brother, you're not far off. You're not far off because I, while you was doing that, the people see on the screen, I open up the the IOTA, which is uh, Amharic software that has His Majesty's Bible, and I saw where it has the word Allah Nebebachahumin. Allah Nebebachahumin. Um, I never be, I never be like to read. Allah never bought you human. Like, uh, haven't you read? Allah never bought you human. Like, haven't you read the word? But when I look at the Greek, the Greek kind of gives us a little bit, actually, a little bit more. I have to admit this right here because it uses the word gnosis, gnosko. And right here, what it brings out is the sense of Strong's definition. I have this on the screen. Strong's definition says, Anagonosko, which is the word to rate, read, means to know again. It has a sense, by extension, it means to read, but it means to know again. So here, from the Greek, pers the coin of Greek perspective, it has the word read, but it's bringing the context of the word read of knowing something again. Of getting to know like the gnosis like you said the reading nature getting to know it again so when he says to them haven't you read he knows that they read but haven't you really read you're reading it it's like it's like a teacher said one time you read well right but you don't um understand well right or you read well but you don't um interpret well like somebody might read something yeah they can read it well they sound well reading it but they don't understand it as well as they can read it. So this sense of reading it again, it's almost like somebody reads something and they don't get it, right? And you say, go read it again. And then when they read it again and, and say, no, read it again, take your time. And they read it, and, oh, that is what he's saying. Haven't you read? Haven't you really read it? Not just read it, just to read, but haven't you really understood it? Haven't you gotten to know this again? Do you fully know this? It's like that full knowledge, you know what I mean? You have knowledge, but do you fully know it? Like, someone say, do you know about this? I know about it, but I may not know how to really do it. You know what I mean? Because I don't have that full knowledge. I know about it, but I don't know it. I don't know it, know it. You know, like we say, I don't know it, know it. So he says, have you read, read it? You know what I mean? Have you really read it? You know what I mean? <laughs> but what you say about nature, by being able to read, this is what he's going to break down here. So it's interesting that you focus on that word read right there. The, 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 the simple sense of the translation is he's saying read, but in the spirit, the letter of it says read. The spirit of it brings out what you're bringing out and what we just went in by going into the word. Have you really gotten to know it? Do you really, do you really know what you're reading? It's almost like saying that, you know, do you really know what you read? You know what I mean? Do you really know what you read? You know, you know that in the beginning, you know, the first book, male and female, right? And he goes down and says, you know, and how the two are supposed to be one and all that, right? And therefore, in answer to your question, go, go, what was that question? The question, or like my brother says, I, I like the country accent, question, question, right? The question, right? That question was, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause, for all cause, for any cause? She burnt my food. She did this. Or she, you know what I mean? I don't like the way she looked at me. She didn't smile at me. You know what I mean? Last night I wanted to cuddle. She, she said she didn't feel like it. I'm going to put her away. You know what I mean? This is what they're coming up with. So now Yeshua says, have you read? Have you not read? But like you said, it's not the, just a letter of reading. But, but remember, they, he, they're, they're Pharisees. And the Pharisees at one time were some of the best educated. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, they could slice and dice it well. And at one time, I want to say this to everybody, one time the Pharisees were good before they became bad. Just like a lot of Christians were. But anyway, let, let's go on right here. Right? Wherefore, thank you, my brother. Wherefore, they are no more twain, right? But one flesh. What therefore Elohim have joined together, let not man, notice what he says, let not man put asunder what Elohim have joined together. So, so he's saying so much more than even what people are reading here. You know what I mean? At first, they have to, and a gnosko, they have to read it again. They have to get to know it again. What Elohim have joined together, what you mean? What Elohim have joined, just because 
I or the I or any of us may have a wife or a woman may have a man. The question is, has Elohim joined that? You know what I mean? Has Xavier joined that together? You know, they said to him, why did Moses? Well, hold, hold on. People say it's Deuteronomy, the words of the Lord. Some are saying the Lord commanded this. He commanded to go and take a captive woman and to have her in your house for 30 days and to have her shave her head and take off her old clothing and cut her nails and then you can go into her and then if you don't like it, you have to send her free and you can't sell her, nothing like that. But, but some people interpret this as, as like, like uh, R-A-P-E. You know what I mean? They, they interpret that, that this is like a form of R-A-P-E. You know what I mean? Now... I would say from our modern view, from our today's view, yes. From our today's view of how we do things today, yes, it would seem it would seem so, right? But still, it was not Yahweh, it was not Yahuwah that commanded this. It's not Yahuwah that commanded this. That's, that's why the letter to the epistle to Flora is very important, right? The epistle to Flora is very important. You have that open in front of you? Yeah. You have that open in front of you? I'm gonna bring yeah. that. I'm a, I want you to go to the, the section. You'll see it's not the first page. Go to the second page. and what Yeah, but then when it says on the second part of the page, where it says exposition, the nature of the law. Where it says the nature of the law. So people are not in the blind, and I can show this on the screen right here. Let me bring this up right here. It's the second page where it says, um, it's, it's on the second page, the second side. Which is the topic at the first at the top, and then it okay. says the exposition. Okay, I see it now. Yeah. The nature of the okay, law. Right. Let's just read this together right here, because this is this is something that I and I want to really go through in detail. But when I heard that again, I said I got to say something about this because no, Deuteronomy is not what the Lord commanded. What the Lord spoke in 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 in, in the Torah. The part that he spoke in the Torah, the main part, is the Ten Commandments. What, the, what, the, what people call the ten, com the ten Words. And after he spoke that, the people were so afraid, they said to Moses, If we hear the voice of Elohim, Yahuwah, Eloheinu, we will die. Moses, you hear what he says and you speak to us. So they wanted Moses to be the intermediary, the mediator. This is in chapter 20 of Exodus. Read the whole chapter. And then when you come to after the 10 words, the 10 commandments are given, you'll hear the people, they were afraid and they moved far away. And Moses said, no, Yahweh is testing you this day. And Moses is about to go in the thick cloud, the dark cloud, right? The dark waters. And the people are afraid. And he said, no, come on. And the people say, no, Moses, you speak to God. If we, hear his, if we hear God speak with his own spoken voice, word, mouth, we will die. All right? I'm pointing it out because this is why in the New Testament, Yeshua is the mediator. This is why he is the mediator. The mediator is the one that, the, the go-between. Why? Because the people, listen, everybody says they want to talk to God, right? The people here, according to the Bible, they are hearing God speak. The only time they heard God speak, right, according to the Torah, I would say according to the five books, the main part, right, with the Israelites, that is, is in Exodus chapter 20, where he spoke 10 words, like 10 articles. Like, you know what we teach? We teach that, that there's no such thing as the Ten Commandments, really. It's the Ten Words. And the Ten Words is one commandment. That's why if you break one part, you break them all. That's why when David committed adultery, he didn't say, why did you break the, 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 the fifth, sixth, seventh, or whatever? No, no, he didn't say that. He said, you, you, broke the, you, you, you violate the commandment. You, you know what I mean? You went against the commandments. To, to go against any one of it is to go against the whole thing, basically. That's what you find in James. But let's go over this here. The law, the nature, the nature, the nature of the law. And when we say law, we're saying the Torah. The three divisions of the law, the Torah. This will help ones a lot. When they're looking at the Torah and they're seeing all of, like, like Genesis, Exodus, um, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And they get to Deuteronomy 
they find some things in Deuteronomy that they find a little offensive. Well, that's because people lived in an offensive time, right? But they, they, they say that's what the Lord said, right? That's what the Lord said. Even though Moses, he's talking in the third person. He's talking in the third person, right? He's talking... Well, we'll get into that. Let's first deal with this right here. Three divisions of the law. There are three divisions of the Torah. So that means everything that we read in the five books of Moses comes on the one of these three parts. Right? Most multiple authors, authorship multiple of, the, of the Torah. The Torah basically simply means, Torah is not law, really. That's the way the white man translated. Torah means direction, instruction. So the Torah is the whole thing. And the Torah is specifics. Like when it says the law of the leper, in the Hebrew, that's the Torah of the leper. That's the direction instruction for the leper. When it says the law of the woman, menstrual, that's the direction instruction. When it says the law of the man in battle, that's the direction instruction. So the whole thing. But the pure Torah, the pure Torah, I say it again, the pure Torah was the ten words. That's why His Majesty says to fulfill the Ten Commandments. So it says, now, first you must learn that as a whole, the law or Torah contained in the Pentateuch, that's the five books of Moses, first five books of the Bible, was not established by a single author. The Christians and the Bible people will say, that all the Bible, everything in the Bible is God. That God is speaking throughout the Bible. No, God is speaking in many places of the Bible where they say, where, where a witness says, thus saith the Lord. So we accept it on faith that that part, thus saith the Lord. The other parts are other people speaking. You know what I mean? It's just logic, right? I mean not by God alone, not by Elohim alone. Rather, there are certain of its commandments that were established by human beings as well. Now, does this offend you? This might offend a lot of people because they believe that everything in the Torah is what God said. Even though they're reading it and it's talking about Abraham doing this and talking about Jacob doing that. You know, he walking, he talking to this person. It didn't say that God was talking. You know what I mean? It didn't say God was talking. You know what I mean? And then it says, and the Lord revealed himself to, to the prophet, the patriarch. Those parts there, we can accept on faith, on credit, right? That that is what we are being told that the Lord, Yahweh Elohim said. But what people are saying to each other, you know, when, when, when Judah and the Israelites wanted to kill Joseph, it was that God talking? No. When, when Joseph said about the sun and the moon, that was Joseph speaking. So what this is saying is that there are certain commandments that were established by human beings as well. Indeed, our Savior's words, speaking about Yeshua's words, they teach us that the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, divides into three parts. You got that right there? Yeah. Okay, let's go back to this verse right here. Let's go back to this verse in Matthew chapter 19, verse, verse, um, verse 7. They said to, to, to him, to Yeshua, why did Moses then command? Hold on. They said, why did the Lord command? But why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Right? Now, let's pause on this for a moment. Do you know where, do you know where Moses commanded that? See, see, Yeshua is having a debate with people who know the Torah. There are people who don't know the Torah but say they love Jesus. Right? And they are confusing everything. Because they don't know what Jesus is talking about. They don't know what Yeshua is talking about. You see, when you recognize that, okay, here in Matthew chapter 19, verse 7, I had it right here. In, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 7, where does this come from? Where are the Pharisees pointing to? The Pharisees are pointing to, right, 19, verse 4. Let's get this right here. 19, verse 4. Um, I said, sorry, sorry, verse 7. Sleeker, sleeker. And they say to him, Why did Moses command? Right? My book, my book saying to go to uh, Deuteronomy 24. Oh, you said what? Go where? Go to Exodus. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 24, verse 1. No, no, no. You mean Leviticus. Right? 
No, this is what I'm saying, Deuteronomy. No, 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 you mean numbers, numbers. <laughs> you get what I'm doing right there. You know the old fashioned preacher with were you preaching? Deuteronomy twenty four, one to four. Wait, wait. What book are we talking about? We're to, we're talking about Deuteronomy, right? So when people yep. assume that what's written in Deuteronomy was what the Lord commanded, they are wrong. Because right here in the New Testament, Yeshua is being asked by the Pharisees, why did Moses then command? Right? So Moses commands, the Lord commands, Moses commands, and guess who else commands? The elders commanded. And all of that is found in the Torah, especially in Deuteronomy. We have what, what Yahweh said, right? When Moses go over the 10 words, he also gives commandment, right? Like to put away a wife. It wasn't, see, see the, 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 the Pharisees are trying to say that it's God that willed it. But Yeshua steps up and said, no, from the beginning, Elohim said, didn't say anything about that. But then Yeshua now answers here in verse 8. He says to them, Moses, right? Moses. He didn't say Yahweh. He didn't say Yah. He said, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, you know, the first book of the Bible is Bereshith. And basically it means beginning, the beginning, right? Bereshith, right? Or Barashith, right? The beginning. From the beginning... It was not so. And I say to you that whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed for adultery. So you see what Yeshua is doing? Yeshua now is saying that anybody that now follows this and you put away your wife for any reason except it be for fornication, for sexual immorality and marries another, you are now breaking Yahweh's commandment. You're breaking the higher command, the real command, right? Because if they could keep the Ten Commandments, Moses and the elders didn't have to say nothing. But because they found keeping the Ten Words, they found listening to what Yahweh said to be so difficult. They said, we can't hear no more. Can you imagine? They were hearing God speak. You hear people say, I can't wait till I, I be in the Father's presence and I can talk to the Father, Daddy, Abba. Yeah, okay. I hope so. And marry us. Her, which is put away, committeth adultery, right? Adultery, right? Now, let's go back to Flora for a moment. That's why I wanted to pause there to give one a sample, right? So we're at, what we're at, we're at, um, indeed, our Savior's words teach us that the Pentateuch, the five books, divides into three parts. For one division belongs to God himself, to Elohim himself, and his legislations, so there's some things that we find in the five books that is Yahweh Elohim himself speaking and what he's commanding and what he's saying do or don't do, right? While another division or another part belongs to Moses. Indeed, Moses ordained certain of the commandments not as Elohim himself ordained through him. Because remember, Moses was told, say this to the people, say that to the people. Other areas, Moses had the leverage to make commandments. Rather based upon his own thoughts about the matter, like divorce. That's why we just went to divorce right there, right? Like the divorce matter, right? Based on his own thoughts about the matter. And yet there's a third division, right? A third part of Torah that belongs to the elders of the people. Where some things that we find in Torah is because this was what was practiced from the elders and it was not against what Yahuwah had commanded. So their commandments were put in there as well. Because if you kept what the elders said in this and that way, it would lead you to keep what Yahuwah said in the ten words. Right? who likewise in the beginning must have inserted certain of their own commandments. Now you will learn how all this can be demonstrated from the Savior's own words. And here we're just going to touch on this just briefly. Legislation of God of Elohim distinct from legislation of Moses. In other words, what Yah has said, if you study Torah carefully, you'll find it's distinct from what Moses says. All right? 
Now, here's the interesting thing. From a Judaic, a Hebrew, and a Jewish a, a Torah study, we all learn this. We learn this from the, out, from the outset. We learn how to distinguish what is in the Torah that is Yah speaking and what is in the Torah that is man speaking. But Christians and other Bible thumpers, they believe everything in the Bible is what God is saying. You know what I mean? Even though it might have a scene where somebody was killed innocently. You know what I mean? Is that what God is saying we're supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? You know, they get confused about these things. When the Savior was talking with those who were arguing with him about divorce, it was then ordained in the law that divorce is permitted. He said to them, for your hardness of heart, Moses allowed divorce of one's wife. You know why? Because you're dealing with fallen men and people. Can you imagine if you were to say you force people to stay together? Can you imagine that? People who don't want to be together. Can you imagine what's going to happen in the community? Yeah. You know, now from the beginning, it was not so. So in the earlier generation, they didn't even have no thought. Like if I went in her, she's my woman. Well, how am I going to just let her go and let another man go into her and then I'm going to go? This is crazy. But later on, people, you know, for Elohim, he says, has joined together this union. And what the Lord, Yahuwah, has joined together, let not man put asunder. Here he shows that the law of Elohim, of the Most High, of Yahuwah, is one thing. Forbidding a woman to be put asunder from her husband. Except it be for very, very specific reasons. You know what I mean? Like if a woman is giving it up <laughs> elsewhere, you know what I mean? Okay, let her go. You know what I'm saying? But if, if, if sometimes she argues with you and she might be right, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't put her away, right? Forbidding a woman to put us under her husband while the law of Moses. You ever wonder why Yeshua says, and you find in the Bible it's written, in the law of Moses, and the law of Moses. See, they're giving you the hint, but you're thinking that the law of Moses is the law of Yahuwah. See, Yahuwah allowed the, the, the law of Moses. You know what I mean? Because Moses understood the people. Moses cared for the people. Moses put his neck out for the people time and time again. You know what I mean? So Moses, speak to these people. You know what I require, but maybe put it in your words. While the law of Moses is another, permitting the couple to be put asunder because of hard-heartedness. And so accordingly, Moses ordains contrary to what Elohim ordains. For separating is contrary to not separating. Yet, yet, if we scrutinize Moses' intentions, you see, as every good Torah student does, as we do, scrutinize Moses' intention with which, why do you think a lot of the other Jews are able to succeed in other things? Even though we say they don't got rhythm, they don't got this, they don't got that. How come they're running the music business? Anyway, yet if we scrutinize Moses' intentions with which he ordained this commandment, we find that he created the commandment not of his own inclination. Not because he wanted to put away one of his two wives, right? No, but of necessity because of the weakness, go on to the next page, because of the weakness to whom it was ordained. In other words, that's what, that's what the New Testament talks about. Because of the weakness in the flesh. That's why they could not live God's will because their flesh had, they were living after the flesh. Right? The weakness of the flesh. For the latter were not able to put into practice God's intention. They were not able to put in practice the ten words. Ain't know how we know it? From what they said in Exodus. I got to just bring this up right here quickly because I don't want people to believe me. I want people to know that I'm speaking the truth by checking it out for themselves. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and noise of the trumpet and the mount, mountain quaking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said to Moses, speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not Elohim speak with us lest we die. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Have we made the case right there? Elohim is speaking with them 
in Exodus chapter 20. This is when, you know, as we get into this more, that is the pure, that was the pure commandment that God gave with his own mouth. The Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. But because of the weakness of people. You know what I mean? And therefore, you had to give them uh, something else because they were too weak to put into practice Elohim's intention. They were too weak in Exodus chapter 20 at verse 19 where he said to Moses, Speak thou with us because you're flesh and blood. This, this voice, we will hear you. But let not Elohim speak with us lest we die. Lest we die. You know what I mean? So, in the matter of their not being permitted to divorce their wives, some of them were on very bad terms with their wives, and they ran the risk of being further diverted into injustice, and from there into their destruction. Moses wishing to excise, like to cut out, to cut out this unpleasant element through which they also ran the risk of being destroyed, he ordained for them of his own accord a second law. That's why when Peter is, well, not Peter, but Paul is talking about in, in, in Romans chapter 8. And I find there's another law, and I find there's another law. What, what, is, what is Paul talking about? He finds there's another law. I thought you said there's only one law. You see, we as Yehudi who study Torah, like Yeshua said, we know what we worship, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? For salvations of the Yehudi. Some be looking at this through the way the counterfeit Christians have been teaching people, and that's all we have to step up and show it's not that way. There's a, there was already a second law. That's all when, when Paul is talking. Paul, remember, Paul is a Jew. Paul is a, was a Pharisee. Paul, he know this doctrine. He know this teaching. But now his eyes, you know, his eyes were, you know what I mean, open to the truth. So Moses ordained of his own accord a second law, and Yahuwah permitted it. The law of divorce, choosing under the circumstances. I know you don't like this, bro. A lot of us don't like this, but it's a reason in here. The lesser of two evils, as it were. Right? The lesser of two evils. In other words, the second law. Right, would hopefully might prevent further evil. I will put it like that. So that if they were unable to keep the former, that is Elohim's law. It's your wife, it's your wife, it's your wife. It's your husband, it's your husband, it's your husband. They would keep at least the latter. So, so if they were not able to stay together, join in that union of Elohim, then they could at least separate on peaceable terms. Right? So, because remember, our Elohim is not an author of confusion, but he's an author of what? Shalom. So that if they were unable to keep the former, that is Elohim's Torah, his direction instruction, they could keep at least the latter and so not be diverted into injustice and evil, through which utter destruction would follow in consequence. These are Moses' intentions. That's what Yeshua was talking about. You know when Yeshua dropped that on them, they were, I can imagine their faces. They were like, how is this carpenter's so-called son, right? How is this little peasant boy, somebody from the country, how does he know these things? You know what I mean? But what he was doing was rebuking them because they knew this too. You know how I know this? Because this is basic Torah teaching. When we study the Torah from a Hebrew Yehudi perspective. These are Moses' intentions with which we find him ordaining laws contrary and we say contrary contrary to those of elohim they're contrary in the sense that elohim said this from the beginning and moses says this later on but elohim allowed him to say this for the reasons so stated at any rate even if we have for a moment used only one example in our proof it is beyond doubt as we have shown this law is of Moses himself and is distinct from Elohim's law. That's why in the New Testament where it says he's done away with the law. <laughs> People don't get me. He's done away with the law. It's not he's done away with the law of God, but he's done away with those conditions of the mediator. That first mediator was Moses, right? The new mediator is the Moshiach Yeshua. You see what I'm saying? That's the new mediator, 
right? And then it goes into like the tradition, you know, the next part dealing with the elders. So this is why I wanted to get into this right here with the eye, because this right here, as I was reading it, first when I first read it, I was like, what? What is he talking about? But then as I got into the scripts, I said, wow, it explains so much, you know, because there's confusion. You say, well, how could it say this over here? And then it says this over here. Why is God changing? It wasn't God that was that was speaking in, 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 in Deuteronomy. If you go to the very first words of Deuteronomy, you'll see who was speaking in Deuteronomy. Moses is about to die in about maybe, according to the narrative, 30, no more than a month. Basically, these words right here is like Moses' last words. It's like a, like a deathbed blessing, a deathbed confession. Because Jah already told him that he's not going to enter into the land. The Israelites, the new generation is ready to enter in, and he can't go in, right? And if you go to the beginning of Deuteronomy, it says, These be the words which Moses spake. Uh-oh! The very first words of Deuteronomy. What does it say? These be the words which Moses spake. The other words... Debarim was the words that Yahuwah spoke, those 10 words in Exodus chapter 20. That when we get further along, the Israelites say, We can't hear these words because these words are killing us. When they heard the Ten Commandments, it was killing them. It was like, Oh no, oh no, oh no. You know what I mean? <laughs> these be the words which Moses spake to all Israel. So what we have in Deuteronomy is the words that Moses spake. He's about to get up and get out of there. The Israelites are about to leave him where he's at. He's going to die in the wilderness. And the Israelite, the new generation, is about to enter into the land. Right? And Moses kept begging and begging and begging. And, and John said, don't, don't. I like when John said to Moses, Moses said that John said to him, he recalls what John said to him in the third person. Said, John said to him, don't, don't speak to me about this again. Because Moses kept saying, come on, let me go in. Come on, you know, like, you know, almost like, if I, I'm sorry or whatever. And Josh said, don't speak to me about this again. You know what I mean? You got a little time, speak to the people. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, 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 it's, and, and it's a wrap. The good news is that when Yeshua went up on the mountain, he spoke to Moses and Elijah, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it's kind of mystic there. But, um... Yeah, so Deuteronomy is not. Deuteronomy is basically the gospel. For, or on one level, it's preparing for the promised land. Moses is giving his best advice to a new generation. Moses is recounting the time. He's speaking about God's law, Yahuwah's law, the Ten Commandments. And then he's speaking about the other legislation that he received from Yahuwah. And then he also gives his best advice. He gives his counsel as well of what to do in other situations. Situations that Jah did not specifically speak about. Moses seeks to fill in the gaps with what we call Moses' law. So what basically, Moses didn't speak directly against what Jah said. But Moses fills in the gaps. You know how people are. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not murder. Well, what do you mean by murder? Well, if somebody snuck in my house you know you know, you know you know what I'm saying people like to get into those details so that's what Moses does in Deuteronomy he goes over just to clarify any matters so even in that scene where people say there is R-A-P-E and they say that, that the Lord the God of Israel condone, no he don't condone condone means to pardon, go look it up condone means to pardon he doesn't pardon that in fact if you look at it where it talks about if a man finds a beautiful woman, you know, so forth and so on. Like, like if you go to battle against your enemies and then you find among the captives there's a beautiful woman. Everything that Moses is saying, he is saying in the name of the Lord, but it's not what the Lord commanded. He's saying in the name of the Lord because he's the man of the God. He's the man of the God. He's the one that could go and talk to him. Remember, remember the Israelites didn't even want to hear Yahuwah's voice. You remember that? Yeah. They felt they heard his voice anymore, they're going to die. And they say, Moses, let God speak to you. So that means Moses was more powerful. Think about it for a moment. In other words, you talk to the king, and whatever the king says, if, if the king speaks to me, we might die. So that means, that means that Moses had a closer relationship. So we don't question what Moses legislated, 
but we do know what Moses legislated is what Moses legislated. That's why when it talks about the New Testament, you know, certain things being done away with, right? This is what it's talking about here. Some of these things are being done away with because now we, now, how can you say, the, the seed has grown. You know, we're growing to a higher level. Basically, what Deuteronomy is, is the gospel according to Moses. Moses is, it's just like they do in the New Testament. You know what I mean? Where Peter, Peter's talking about things in the epistle of Peter, right? Right? And he basically, some things he's quoting what Yeshua told him. Other things he's quoting what, he's saying what he, you know, what, what he's, what he understands. You know what I mean? And we know he was with the Lord, so we don't. You know, we don't squawk against it. But we know that Peter's statements are not on the same level as Yeshua's statement. Especially after you, you understand what Peter what Peter went through with Yeshua. You know what I mean? You know, you, you know. <laughs> He's our brother. You know what I mean? And he can be right sometime, but we check him out all the time. That's the same thing with Moses. Moses is rated very highly among Hebrews and Israelites even in the Old Testament time. Some Hebrews and Israelites even rated him higher than Yahuwah. And that's where the problem came in. You see what I'm saying? That's when the problem came in. Because it's just like the Israelites who didn't want to hear what Yah said, but what Moses said. That's why Yeshua talks about, and they sit in Moses' seat. Do you get it? Yeah. Because it's a man now, whether a rabbi or somebody else, that can sit up there and can, and can speak with the authority of God. Because Moses basically spoke with the authority of God. You know what I'm saying? Because they already knew that Moses had this relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? And even though Moses was chosen, when they saw that Moses wasn't entering into the promised land, think about that. That showed that Moses could even make mistakes, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Big mistakes with Moses begging, 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 begging. This Torah portion coming up that, that, that we're about to touch on new light is what's it called? Va'et Hanan. Va'et Hanan. And I, be, and I pleaded, I besought, I begged Lemenuhu in them hark. Lemenhu, Lemenu, like to beg, Lemene, to beg. And I begged. And you know what Josh said? Enough of this. I, and and he, told, he, told, he told Moses, shut, you know, basically not to shut up, but enough of this. Don't speak on this. Yeah, he said to Moses, don't speak on this no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, you're not going in. But you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll, I'll let you see the land. I'll let you see the land. You know, that makes you think about even the nature of, of the Father, right? Right? I'll let you see it. it. Is that a good or what? You know what I mean? Like, like nah, 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 nah. You're going to see the land. Okay, I thought you... But you know, the beautiful thing is, in the New Testament, when Yeshua is on top of the mountain and his, and his garments change and Moses is right there, that's mystic. You know what I mean? You know, that's a mystic moment right there. You know what I mean? That's a real mystic moment right there. Because basically what it kind of shows is that, did he make it into the promised land? Because what, what, what the Lord says literally, according to what's written, is that you're not going to enter in with them. Almost like you're not going to enter in. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You see, you read that, right? You get that? You read that. Not just reading the words, but, but, but by reading that you get to see what he's really saying. Not just that you're not going to go like never, ever, 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 ever. No. But you, you're, not, you're not going now. Not at this time. Not with them. You know what I mean? No. Not this time. So, so basically, right, bro, please go through this, man. Please go through the Epistle of Flora. I mean, it's little, but it's Talawa. It's little, but it's Talawa. I would advise, I really want every one of us to really study this. Because it really breaks down the, the, the old to the new, so to speak. You know, and gives clarity. And it uses Yeshua's words to clarify. You see how Yeshua dropped that on them? When Yeshua said what he said to them? They couldn't, they couldn't contradict that. They couldn't contradict that. Notice, when Yeshua drops on them his reasonment, notice what they do. They keep quiet. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have to ask, well, how does he know this? How does he know this? 
you know, because little they know, but he he is that word. But yeah, my brother, um, yeah, man, let's get more into the to, to the pistol, um, cause I, I I like to go through it from the beginning. I kind of skipped over the intro part, yeah, to just touch on this right here that Deuteronomy is not all the words, cause when when one brother, this guy Apostle, was asked that by that guy uh, uh, Frank Gary, aka Sarnetta, he was asked that. I was thinking like, what would I say if I was asked that? Like all all the words in Deuteronomy, like the laws in Deuteronomy, is is this from the Lord? I would say no. You know, cause sometimes we try to defend God. People try to defend God. They try to say, well, you see, no. I would I would have to say no. Just like when the brother quoted His Majesty and then misquoted him, and said instead of receive, adopted, first adopted the the Old Testament. Or the old law, like Moses' law, and when he said adopted, and he said, "Do you disagree with the words or whatever?" I said, "I said, I said yes. I I admit that I I, I have a different point of view on it." And he was like, "What? He going against the match?" I said, "No, I'm going against you. Right, what you said? Yeah, because you you read received, and then you asked whether Ethiopia adopted." Received and adopted is not the same thing. And then he says, "Oh, I'm playing semantics." When people say that, you gotta you gotta watch and ask: Are they trying to take you for stupid? Words are important. Words. Very important. Words are very. Oh man, I, we, 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 that could be a whole reason in itself. You know what I mean? You know, words a word fitly spoken. But yes, my brother. Um. So the three parts of the law, once again, one. From Yah, from Yahweh, that's the ten words, namely and mainly, that's the ten words called the Ten Commandments. That is mainly and namely from Yah, because the Bible, the scripture tells us that he spoke these words with his own mouth. And it also tells the people they didn't want to hear, they didn't want to, ain't that something? The Israelites didn't want to hear Yah. Can you imagine that? It's almost like some of the rosters, I gotta say this, they don't want to hear Hala Selassie. Here, Muta Baruka talk about, hey, don't don't use the Bible to explain the history of Hala Selassie. I really don't know what you mean by that. And, it, and you want to tell Rasa to stop talking. No, Muta, you stop talking. You, you stop giving Rastafari commandments, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, Hala Selassie commandments, Hala Selassie word is good enough. We can reason on that. You can have a different interpretation. But let's stop that. You know what I mean? Unless the king tells us to stop it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we moved to try and sit in sit in Moses' seat. You know what I mean? And everything. But um, yeah, so the second part was from Moses. The second part was from Moses. And it is clear even in the text. It is clear in the text. You know, when you read the text. The third part comes from the elders. Right? There were some things that were the traditions of the elders, of the patriarchs. So this shows us that the law, as we have it in the five books, was not just one thing, but it was actually the building, the birth of a nation. The first, the core part of it, the ten words. That's why when, when I heard that audible, when the, the Luther, Lutheran guy asked his majesty, what, you know, what would you advise young people? Yeah. And he says his advice to all was, notice, it wasn't even keep the commandments. According to the translator, it was to fulfill. Do you know that if the ten words were 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 never fulfilled until Yeshua, it's according to our faith in the King of Kings Christ that only Yeshua fulfilled those ten words? Right? Because if they were able to fulfill those ten words, you see what I'm saying? They would be back in the garden. If you could fulfill those ten words. Those ten words right there. You know, they might seem simple. You know what I mean? And we got to go over what are the Ten Commandments. Because the first commandment is, is I am the Lord thy God. Let's pick up on that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. How is I am the Lord thy God the first commandment? <laughs> you know, from the Hebrew, the Jewish, the Judaic, the Hebraic way, that's the first commandment. Because well, the first commandment is about consciousness. Yeah. The oneness of all. Ah, uh, I am. 
You know what I mean? So that's the first commandment to recognize even in yourself that it's the I am who be in you. Once you recognize that, the other nine become easier, become much more easier because you're not just doing it all, all on, your, on your own. <laughs> you're not doing it by the flesh. You, you know what I mean? Because the flesh can't say, I am the Lord. That, no, the flesh can't say that. But that is why Rastafari always say that we serve a living God. You know? Ah, that the you know, God is about life, you know. That, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. That's another uh, part we got to reason on where Yeshua outwitted them all, because what Yeshua was talking about was when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, right? That Abraham believed that even if he killed Isaac, that Yahweh, that this God that he was worshiping, would raise him up. And I can prove that. That's why, notice, Yeshua quotes that when he talk about that he is the God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And then he talks about Abraham. But Abraham was told to, to kill his son. That's true. And Abraham might have killed his son. Yes, that's true too. But notice, if you read carefully, if you read, read, you know what I mean? Like we say, if you read, read. You'll read that Abraham said, me and my son are going to sacrifice to Yahweh and we will be back. Pause. How in the world, if he was intending to kill him, was he saying that after we go to sacrifice to Yahweh, we're going to come back? You know what I'm saying? Unless he thought that even if he had to kill him, because he lived in a time where people did do that with their children. See, so people don't recognize other well, gods worship was sometimes the sacrifice was sacrifice of children. Yeah, sacrifice your child, sacrifice an animal or a child or something dear near and dear to you. So Moses was figuring that if the people are worshiping these idols, these dead idols and these demonic fallen the film entities, right? And I know they ain't good for nothing, right? And I recognize that this one who who's leading me is the true one, then I'll give that too. If you know if people can give 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 that which is good to that which is evil then why can i give that which is good to the good but he believed that he would return with his son check that out i didn't even peep that before when you, i said why do yeshua use this example of god being the god of the living because abraham in the narrative believed that even if he had to sacrifice and kill his son that somehow this God would raise him up because he told the men with him, we, we, we will be back. You know what I mean? So when he lifts up his hand, it's like, hey, 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 hey. They ain't do that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Look over there. You know, because remember, he told his son when his son asked, his son asked, Listen, Daddy, we got the wood, we got the fire, but where's the sacrifice? What did Abraham say to his son? Abraham said that Yahweh will provide for himself a lamb. Now, that's an interesting verse there in the Hebrew, because it could be read that Yahweh will provide himself a lamb. Think about how that can be meted on. He, he will provide what? Himself a lamb. And lo and behold, when Abraham was about to, to draw that, that, that cutlass or whatever he had, he, his, that, his, his direction was pointed to, the, to, the, to, the, um, to the, the ram in the thicket. You know what I mean? And he told his son that. His son asked him. Notice he didn't say to his son, boy, I'm going I'm to I'm a, I'm a sacrifice you. Notice that. The son said, daddy, daddy, we got the wood, we got the fire, but where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said that Elohim is going to provide it. Jehovah Jireh, Jireh is my provider. Abraham, he said that God is going to provide it. And lo and behold, he, for people, people, that's, that's chapter 22 of Genesis. You can find all of that good stuff if you really read, as we said from the beginning. If you really read, have you read, right? So, so read it so you can know it again. If it don't make sense at first, go over it again. You know what I mean? And then come, come, come. Make a reason. Oh, we're going to have a new theme song coming forward. <laughs> Just vibes in. 
Just vibes it, yes. Just vibes soon it. To come, soon to come. Soon to come, soon to come. My brother, um, yo, check out a little bit more. Even if it's just a bite side, if it's not the whole thing, just, just go over maybe like the first, the prologue area, even up to what we read, because that, that opening part, it, it, it's a reason, man. It's a reason right there. It's a yeah, reason. Right, right. Right. Okay, when you first send it to me. Yeah, man. <laughs> when you first send it to me, I read the first couple of paragraphs there. Yeah, because he talks about the logic, how something seems a little bit illogical. Right? Because one, they're just taking everything. People take the Bible like, the Bible is not all the words of God, or all the words of Yahweh. No. It's the words of Yahweh, right? As recorded by men. It's the words of men. <laughs> You know what I mean? As well. <laughs> it's the words of God and the Bible is the word of God and man. <laughs> God and man and God and man. You know what I mean? God and man and God and man. Yes, my brother. Any any just closing right now, right here. I think this is like a wow, about seventy minutes right here. You know? Yes, sir. You just have to pay attention to these stories a little more closer and get out of the religious teachings, you know, the, the you know the mindset of the Catholic Church, you know. Because most of these overstandings that we have, you know, came from their point of view, you know, and we have to start looking into these things differently, open our minds to a different point of view. You know, I'm not saying I'm telling you to believe nothing that everybody's saying, but like his majesty said, find the truth for yourself, you know? Ah, our, oh, our, oh, oh, amen. So that's my closing right there. Amen. I, I'm going to say amen on that one right there. Find the truth. Find the truth for yourself, brothers and sisters. Definitely. We're going to pick up with this a little bit more because this is an important reason, man. There's more in the Epistle to Flora. If you can find the Epistle to Flora, get a read. Get a read and a reason, man. You know, so it's, it's a good reason, man. And it's backed up by, by the scripts. Yes, sir. Rastafari. Shabbat Shalom, Simba Salam, you know? Yes, sir. Sabbatical order. Sabbatical order, order, order. Yes, sir. Blessed sons and daughters.